Hello, I'm Catherine Murphy, the moderator for the League of Women Voters candidate interview. I'm joined by John Ward, candidate for Hospital District 1, Commissioner 4. The ground rules for this event were shared earlier with John and are posted in the description below. The interview consists of an opening statement, followed by three questions and a closing statement. All candidates running for this position were invited to be interviewed. So let's get started, John. You have 60 seconds for your opening remarks. Okay, thank you. So my name is John Ward and I was elected to the hospital board in 2019 and had a few months to kind of get my bearings straight and then COVID hit. So we immediately were faced with one of the biggest challenges the hospital system has dealt with uh, in a lot of years. The first few weeks of COVID with the governor shutting down a lot of the medical procedures we were losing millions of dollars per week. And it was a very scary time for a small rural hospital, but we navigated through it. We were able to keep uh, all the employees employed. We didn't lay off anyone. Um, people did pitch in to take leave of absences and things that they, you know, they, they were looking forward to, but together everyone remained employed. And we were really proud of, of that. We finally navigated through um, the, uh, the pandemic, we're emerging into a little bit more of the new normal world and working very hard on keeping our hospital stable and growing it where we can to serve the population of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the first question. In many rural areas, provider retention is an issue. What can the hospital board do to improve KVH provider retention? And you have 90 seconds to answer. Thank you. So uh, coincidentally, I just returned from a conference yesterday that included most of the rural hospitals in this state. And it is a problem for everyone, not obviously not just in the state, but around the country. You know, a shortage of providers. It's kind of the perfect storm with the COVID situation. A lot of uh, providers who were later in their career decided to retire. A lot of people who were maybe mid-career but had other options stepped away. So just the reality is there is a shortage of providers and combine that with being a rural community makes it a real challenge. So as a hospital, what we do and what we're continuing to do is try to make ourselves the employer of choice, a place that when we're competing for the providers that are available, we, we have created an environment that's desirable to be a part of. And you know, one indication is that we have some travelers, we have some locums that come in temporarily and we've converted some of those to full-time employees. When they've had a chance to experience Ellensburg for a few months working here temporarily, they've taken us up on the opportunity to become full-time long-term employees. So it's, it's a constant struggle, and we are constantly looking at what's every option we can do to make this a place the few people out there available to, to work as providers would want to choose and raise their family in Ellensburg. So um, again, we're not alone. It's that way everywhere, but we take it very seriously and we have ongoing discussions. What can we do to make sure that we are a place people want to choose? Thank you. Please explain how your experience and qualifications match the duties of a hospital commissioner and you have 90 seconds. Okay, thanks. So uh, my original background's in physics and physics is all about understanding how things work. So for better or for worse, I find that my role on the board is to ask a lot of questions. Why, why, why? Why do we do this? Why do we choose to do this? Why do we not do this? And through that, I learn about the decisions that are made. And I also find the people that uh, run the hospital have to think through things a little more thoroughly that they weren't sometimes being asked these questions and so forth. So I'm a curious person. I like to learn. I love to brainstorm. Uh, get together with the stakeholders who uh, have uh, problems they're trying to solve as administrators. And as a board member, we provide the, the governance, the, the long-term strategy, but we make ourselves available to work with the individuals uh, who run the hospital to be an asset in what, any way we can to help them do their job well. And, you know, I'm proud to be part of a board that, you know, we don't always see eye to eye, but we're respectful of one another. and once we make a decision, we stand behind it as a board. It's important that, that senior leadership understands 
that once the board speaks, we're united and you can't pick us off and try to get us to change our decision. And that sort of consistency is important for the hospital to move forward long term and so forth. So again, I'm a, I'm a physicist, I'm a curious person, I ask a lot of questions, and I'm willing to do the work to educate myself to make good decisions for the citizens of this community. Thank you. The final question is, what can the hospital board do to position KVH to meet the next COVID type challenge without burning out staff? And you have 90 seconds. Can, can, you, can you just repeat that question one more time before I answer it? I just sure. want to get it clear in sure. my mind. What can the hospital board do to position KVH to meet the next COVID type challenge without burning out staff? Well, and you want this done in 90 seconds. All right, let's go. <laughs> um, you know, I think we just do what we're doing, which is we appreciate each individual employee and member of the hospital and try to understand, you know, what their needs are. What do they value as an employee that makes them want to commit? And we have to appreciate that these unknowns like COVID that show up are incredible obstacles to overcome. And I'm hoping that what you're describing does not happen real soon. Because like anybody who expends a tremendous amount of energy to make it through a difficult period, you need a little bit of time to recuperate and so forth. So, you know, I don't have any specific magical answers. It's just the reality that we work with really talented, professional, um, compassionate providers and the other members of the hospital that keep it running. And I know as long as they feel leadership, the board, senior leadership, is supporting them and doing everything we can. They will do everything they can to make through whatever that next unknown pandemic type situation is. But uh, again, as a citizen, I, I hope we get a little bit of a breather because it took a lot out of everyone, as we all know. But we're committed to our jobs. We're committed to one another. And so I feel confident that whatever's thrown at us, we will regroup, we will figure out solutions, and we will move forward. Thank you. Thank you. It's now time for your closing statement and you have 60 seconds for that. 60 seconds, okay. So um, again, I've been a board member for uh, three and a half years. Uh, it's important to understand that there's a certain amount of training that goes into it to understand how it works, how to do a good job. And so I've filled a partial term. And so I'm just coming to the conclusion of a partial term and this is the first time I'm running for a full term. So I would hope that people appreciate the effort that goes into becoming a good board member. And as long as they feel uh, I'm, I'm doing okay, that they'll continue to support me to, to be a good board member. You know, my three uh, main principles is what services can we grow and do well? How can we make sure the hospital remains financially viable? And how can we make sure that KVH is an employer of choice, a place where everyone is respectful and compassionate, and it's an environment for employees, visitors and patients alike, that it's a place they want it and they trust to go get good healthcare treatment. And I'd like to be a part of that. So I welcome anybody who is willing to vote for me and support another uh, six years for me to, to work as a commissioner on the board. Thank you. Thank you, John Ward, for participating in this interview and for offering to serve our community as District 1 Hospital Commissioner 4. For those watching, remember to check votewa.gov to be sure you are registered to vote. All interviews will be linked in the Kittitas County League of Women Voters web guide, which you can be find at kittitasleague.org. Thanks for voting in this and all elections.